Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. I hope everybody had a great trading day yesterday as we saw huge moves in the market. I think it was the single biggest up day the market has seen uh, since the 1930s, if you can imagine that. But what it doesn't tell us is, did we change our overall trend direction? So we're going to look today at the trend direction and see what does that look like overall. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get the alerts and the updates as they happen. And as always, uh, make sure that you are sharing this channel with others so that they can know more about what it is we do. If you're watching this on my personal YouTube page, uh, we are going to be totally transitioning the Daily Market Commentary over to the Traders Army YouTube page as of April 1st. So go to, go to youtube.com slash Traders Army. Make sure you subscribe to that page so that you don't miss even a day of the DMC. All right, let's go ahead and get rolling. The ES this morning, we're up about 20 points. It's continuing to rally, which is less than a percent, which is probably the the, the, the weakest uh, overnight move I've seen in, in a while. Um, and yesterday, we had a pretty strong rally. We spoke yesterday about the fact that you know, there's a chance for a breakout above this 2390 level. That was our breakout area, and we got a decent move away from that zone. But what did it do to our overall trend direction? Remember that the ES represents the S&P 500, which is our our largest and most important of all the markets. And we're sitting right below this pivot area up here, which was our, our last swing high from Friday. So Friday and into Sunday. Sunday we had our strong gap down, but that that you know that limit down that we hit Sunday night has not yet been even come close to retested. And we got a really strong move away from there. Um, we've, we've come back up to this 2,500 level, which is a whole round number. And we're seeing a bit of a pullback from that zone, but looking at what we are, where we are on a four hour chart, what I see on a four hour chart is that we definitely have, um, a nice retracement back up. We do not yet have a higher swing high or a higher swing low. So what does that mean for our trend? It means that our trend is still down. Our trend is down until I get a higher swing high and a higher swing low. And when I look at this on the daily chart, I want to see where's my next daily area of supply. I think there's a chance that we'll, that we'll continue uh, to trend higher. I think there's a chance that the market will go higher, but I don't think we're going we're gonna to stop the overall downward move. I, I, I believe that, that uh, if we get above this 2,500 level, I think that now I'm just looking from a pure daily perspective. I don't want to erase my lines that are from hourly charts. Um, but when I'm looking at it from a pure daily market perspective, I love this wick over wick level here as a short area to re-engage uh, if the markets do come back down. So um, if we rally up to this wick over wick area that I've got identified right here, that would be a level that I would look at as the stall point, if you will, in these markets. Um, we'd have to be able to get through there, and that is going to be a, a tough order, and that's about 2750 in the S&P is the midpoint there. The bottom there is about 2709. So, you know, could we could we pick up another 200 points in the S&P and continue to rally? Yes, absolutely, certainly we could. So what does that mean for today, and what can we look at for today? Well, looking at our hourly chart, Certainly, this above 2,500 becomes a breakout point, provided that I get some basing uh, above this area here. So I would look for quality basing based upon our rules, right? Our rules tell us we need three touches, that we need the market to give us some sideways price action before the breakout, and that would be the level that we would see price move from. And, and if we do move up, you know, your first target might want to be this area here, which was our uh, stopping point from the limit down we had two weeks ago. So keep that area there as kind of a first target in your mind. And a second one up in here. And, and I, would, I would, you know, we're, we're in a very fluid situation, right? We've, we've certainly seen that the stimulus aid package was passed. Uh, one of the things that I saw a lot yesterday was our VIX. And the fact that our VIX on a daily chart came down throughout the day. Our VIX got got much, much lower throughout the day, but then closed on the high in a very bullish day. And what is the VIX? The VIX is the, the volatility index, oftentimes called the fear gauge, 
right? So what we saw was as the market rallied up, option prices fell overall, right? Because this is what's going to oftentimes gauge market prices. So as the market rallied up, option prices fell. But then as it continued to rally up, the as the market continued to rally up, option prices continued to gain in value. And so I think that could be a couple things. One, it could be that uh, the supply and the demand of the options continue to rise, even though the price rose. And that means that that the the specialists out there, the market makers were saying, listen, I, I don't feel like this is a sustainable rally. And that's my belief. You know, my belief, and I spoke about this yesterday from the monthly perspective is we even if we get a rally up to here now, mind you, a rally up to that level from our lows would be rallying about 25% up off the lows. And that's that's what we'll hear about, right? Is that the market's up 25% off the lows. And had you just invested um, on Monday, then you are up 25% in a week. Well, that doesn't break our overall trend direction on the daily time period at all, provided that we don't put in a higher swing low. We need a higher swing high and a higher swing low in order to change our trend direction. And we're nowhere near that on the daily. And a matter of fact, the four hour, we're not there either. And so what I don't want people to do is to get lulled to sleep. And I know a lot of people who say, well, you know, now should I start buying stocks today? Um, if if you've been in, then certainly I wouldn't necessarily get out uh, because I think that that you know you're 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 probably holding on for the rest of that for the rest of that move but if you've not been in then um i don't know that it makes sense to try to jump in before you see that move go and and i'm okay missing out on a move up to get long on a rally or to get long on a pullback i'm okay missing that absolute bottom because I, I think what happens is we get so caught up in trying to pick the bottom that then we miss the opportunities when the market does give it to us. So that's why I talk about breakouts. And breakouts give me the uh, the opportunity to get in as we come back up into here, provided that I get the basing. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Um, if you've got questions on that, please make sure you reach out to me, and I'll do my best to explain it um, in, in clear and more detail. But you know, just looking at volatility, when I started this recording seven and a half minutes ago, the markets were up twenty. We're now back to flat, right? So the volatility is real, um, and and something for us to definitely make sure that we understand. All right, moving over to the NASDAQ. Uh, NASDAQ, same picture we spoke about yesterday. We did get a bit of a retest into a demand area that we thought could show a good promise for a long, and it did get us a nice rally out of that level. Um, so that, that demand area was a fairly strong zone. Looking on the pullback we're getting right now, you know, when I look at this, we're, we're coming into the area where we might see some strength. So uh, keep an eye on this little area here for a bit of strength to see if we rally up out of there. If we don't rally up out of here, none of these lower demand areas are super strong. And so I don't know that I would be overly optimistic about them holding if we continue to, to kind of pull away. Next, crude oil. So yesterday we talked about this breakout level in crude. We got a fair amount of basing in front of this uh, crude breakout level in the overnights. If you didn't get in on this thing, I think it's still a valid breakout area, provided the price comes back up into this region. Um, if you are more inclined to look for something like this, you can. Um, but if we get down to here, I think our our downtrend really continues to take hold. And so, you know, looking at this overall, I think that if we have basing. We've got a lot of potential breakout areas, really, is, is what I when I look at crude, I think about a lot of dish, different breakout areas. And so if we get basing in front of here, there's a breakout to the downside and the basing above here. Still, we have the breakout to the upside. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at in crude. Let's move over and talk about gold. So yesterday, when we were looking at gold, we looked at the potential for a breakout above this 1671 level. Unfortunately, we didn't get the basing required in order to have a strong entry for that breakout. We got a huge move above it, but no, uh, no, no basing to give us uh, an entry into there. Now, I will say this. One of the things that we're seeing in gold is I'm going to leave the second one up there is a slowing of momentum um, as we've we've kind of hit this top here twice our our strong rally up pullback smaller rally up deeper pullback so I wouldn't be surprised to see us get a little bit of a of a pullback today in gold and somewhere down in this region would be a good reversal so nothing really to add from yesterday's markets in gold uh, moving over to bonds and currency markets. 
in the ZN. Yesterday we spoke about uh, this little area of demand and the fact that our uptrend was gaining a little bit of weakness. I'm a little bit concerned with this level because we're getting a, a bit of basing in front of the zone. Basing in front of a zone is the kiss of death for a level. So you might want to look at this as a confirmation trade instead of a limit entry uh, if you do still like it at all. Because remember that your opposing level of supply would represent your target. And so it's very, very close at this point. So I'm going to leave it here um, because I still think it's valid. I think it's a, a pretty clean, pretty valid level after, you know, with this big move up. But I would be a little bit cautious of that zone. Next, the Aussie. So looking at the Aussie, we had a, exactly what we look for in a breakout in the Aussie, uh, as that one has hit and made a really nice move, came to our target area and gotten a little bit of a pullback from that zone. So if you uh, you should have hit and tar you should have hit target one already, and then if you got short on this area here, you're getting a nice little pullback on that piece. That would tell me then that my next my uh, my next area to get sh to get long would be a pullback into this region right in here at 59.86. So um, that one's moving nicely. Uh, if you've gotten that one, uh, once we get to about this 60.12 area or, uh, or, or, or 0 0.6, then just I would say take a little bit off the table, maybe even move your stop to break even. In the Euro, so the Euro yesterday, we were looking at this 15 minute level and unfortunately on this one we came into the level um but one two three four five six candles later had gone nowhere so the six candle rule if you're playing the six candle rule in effect you're out at about break even maybe you took a little bit more off the table off this spike and then we just fell right through that zone so that zone was unable to hold so what am i looking at for today we're well, looking at my four hour chart we are kind of flatlining a little bit, losing a little bit of steam. So I don't have anything new to add today to the euro until the market gives me a definitive movement one way or the other. Technically, our downtrend is still intact, um, but I want to wait and get uh, get some definitive, more definitive movement. Canadian dollar uh, getting a little bit of a rally here in the Canadian dollar, uh, but not a huge one as we've come up into this area of supply. We spoke yesterday about all those upper wicks and what all those upper wicks mean as far as weakness coming into there. So um, I, I think that we could still see prices break higher. But once again, like the other currencies, I'm just not going to do much on the Canadian dollar today as we're chopping sideways. Great British pound, a uh, very similar picture as well. Uh, the difference in the pound versus the others is that we do have a pretty strong move up here. Uh, looks a little bit more like the Aussie than the other two. Uh, so we're coming close to this area of supply, which I have highlighted up here, which is a pretty good time of day that it's set up. But I don't like the fact that we came close and are now pulling back. So now what I would do is look to this area here and get rid of the one above me. I think that that makes a bit more sense, especially since the fact that on a four hour, we we have gotten a slightly higher high, um, roughly the same swing lows, consolidation here kind of basing, but I think that we, if we get a pullback into this region, we may get a chance to get long. Japanese yen, like the rest of our currency markets, a lot of sideways. I will say this, that we are getting a lot of this price action here. So that's naturally going to be a, a bearish setup as typically price would come down from this trade. Not always, but it's definitely the more common of the two setups. So I know I went through the currencies fairly quickly because I spent a bit more time on equities. Um, so if you, uh, if you want to, uh, to learn a bit more and you have any questions, please, as always, send us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. But remember, this volatility can get tough. I mean, this is a f we're now 14 minutes into the recording, and the markets were up 20 when I started. They're now down 20. So just keep that in mind as we're as we're looking at our markets every day uh, and seeing how these how this movement can affect you. So hope you guys have a great day, and uh, I will talk to you tomorrow. Thanks. See ya.